Today, on this video, we'll be looking at some of my most anticipated board games that will be published in 2020. Thank you for joining me today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. I'm going to be talking about on this video my most anticipated board games that'll be published in 2020. Now I had to narrow the pool down, the selection down a little bit, just because there are so many thousands, thousands of games that are launched that are going to be published. So I had to decide how am I going to narrow that pool down, and I decided, all right. No Kickstarter games at all on this video. So if the game was Kickstarter in any way, there was any crowdfunding going on, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, whatever, whether it was done in the past, whether it's going to be done in the future, whether it's going on right now, it's just not going to be part of this video. That's not to say that Kickstarter games aren't great. I love Kickstarter games. We cover Kickstarter games all the time on this channel. I just had to narrow my pool down for this video in some way, so I decided just games that are going straight to retail, at least as far as I know, there's no crowdfunding involved. You can let me know in the comments below if some game that I talk about is going to be Kickstarter or something, I didn't know about it. Anyway, I'll be talking about 11 games and actually more because at the end of the video I'll be talking about some honorable mentions, so let's get started on this video. Sonora from Pandasaurus Games, you have entered the Sonoran Desert. This is a flick and write game where dexterity and roll and rights meet. Players flick wooden discs into a game board represented of the different vibrant landscapes across the Sonoran Sands. Each area encompasses a different unique game, so a skillful aim is required to play in the region of the player's choosing. But watch out for the other players eager to bump discs to score points for themselves. This is a one to four player game that plays in about 30 to 45 minutes I'm really interested in how this is all going to work with the dexterity portion that sort of reminds me of Crokinole and then the roll and write and how those two board game mechanics work. <music> Succulent from Renegade Game Studios. This is a game for two to four players. It takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play. Designed by J. Alex Caverne. You'll be selecting, pruning, and caring for the plants. You compete against your peers for projects to become this community's premier succulent gardener. I'm super interested in this one. I think it's got a great designer, a great production team. I love engine building games and the set collection with engine building. Really interested in that. I like other plant type games, herb herb type games. Herbaceous from Pencil First a few years ago. Really enjoy that card game. I, I love just that theme. So with the engine building and this plant Theme. I'm really interested in succulent. Number nine, Merchant of Dung Hong from Mandu Games. It's a game for two to four players. It takes about 25 to 30 minutes to play. During the era of the ancient Silk Road, this was a major stop. Players are powerful merchants in the city that control the supply of valuable goods. Various people in the market will help you collect information and skills that they provide. The artwork looks cool on this one. Uh, Man, dude, the, the, usually their aesthetic looks really good on their games. The set collection, hand management, I love those types of games, so I'm really interested in what this brings to the table. Number eight. Stellar from Renegade Game Studios. This is a two-player only game. In the game, your stargazer is calibrating your telescopes to see planets, moons, asteroids, interstellar clouds, black holes, even satellites, as you create a beautiful display of the night sky. The game says that you have 11 rounds to play cards to your telescope and notebook to build a night sky tableau. And after that, you're going to calculate points, and the stargazer with the most points is going to win. Now, what intrigues me the most is not that it's a two-player game. Two-player games are okay for me. Melissa and I love two-player games, but we really like playing games with a group of people, so like three or four players. But what really intrigues me is the design team behind this is Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, and we really enjoy what they what games they've designed in the past. So interested in what Stellar brings to the table, like the theme too. Number seven. 
Fort from Leader Games. This is a two to four player card game about building forts and following friends. Now, Leader Games currently does have a Kickstarter oath on Kickstarter, but I believe from what I heard, Fort is going straight to retail. In Fort, you're a kid. Like many kids, you want to grow your circle of friends, collect pizza and toys, and build the coolest fort. One of the interesting things about this, it says that your cars not only let you take actions on your own turn, but also let you follow other players' actions on their turn, so maybe a little Puerto Rico thing going on there, not sure. It sounds cool with the deck building and the hand management. Number six. Mary Posos from AEG. This is the Spanish word for butterflies. This is designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and illustrated by Matt Paquette. This is a game of movement and set collection that lets players be part of this amazing journey. It's played over three seasons. Your butterflies try to head north in the spring, spread out in the summer, and return south in the fall. You might be familiar with the name Elizabeth Hargrave because she designed the game Wingspan, which has won numerous awards already. Wingspan was one of my favorite games from 2019 in my top 10 list. This game really intrigues me, and I'm really excited what Mary Poses brings to the table. Number five, My City from Cosmos, designed by Reiner Knizia. This is a competitive legacy game in which you develop a city on your own playing board throughout the ages. Now, it says that the game consists of 24 episodes, so I'm assuming that's 24 games, beginning with a development of a city in its early, strage- early stages and then progressing through to industrialization. And during the game, players can customize their experience, adding elements to the game, altering cards, which, you know, a legacy game definitely needs to do, destroying them and removing them from play. So definitely those legacy aspects. Players are going to have choices and actions made during one session that are going to affect others. So, I mean, that's legacy to me. And for players who don't want to experience the legacy format, it's got a double-sided game board that offers an alternate setup for repeatable play. So... If you want to play Legacy, it's got that, but if you're like, nah, I don't want to do Legacy, then it sounds like it's got that too. Number four. Chrono Corsairs from Tasty from the Minstrel Shores Games. of an Island, a fearsome time storm has wrecked several pirate ships in a desolate harbor. What's worse, you're cursed to live the same day over and over again until the time storm subsides. At the start of each loop, players simultaneously select plans to place into their timeline then you can follow these plans to move your crew around the island. Events happen at the same time in the same place every loop, so as you explore the island, you'll unlock its secrets and learn to avoid its many dangers. At the end of each loop, all the pieces on the board reset as you collect treasure. Doubloons can be spent to upgrade your crew, while time gems can be kept from loop to loop. As the storm's intensity increases over the course of the game, it unlocks new scoring opportunities and produces strange anomalies. So Melissa and I were able to see a early version, prototype copy of this game, at least the box cover, at Gen Con at the TMG booth, and I was really initially just like, ooh, what is this game about? Chrono Corsairs, so time pirates, right? So I think they took that theme, that idea with the time pirates. I think it looks really cool with uh, how the mechanics work in the game. I'm really interested in playing a game of this. And uh, man, I, I'm not sure if it's going to sort of feel like time stories where you're repeating things, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be more of how, getting the right cards to combo or build an engine so that you can get further or go to the right spaces on the different spots. So, well, we will put a video review of this out maybe in a few weeks because we just got it to uh, to our house here. So, looking forward to playing it this weekend and uh, getting a review out after we play it a number of times so that we really understand what this game's about. Number three. Dice Realms from Rio Grande Games, designed by Tom Lehman. Melissa and I were able to see an early version of this at Gen Con and actually got to play a few rounds of it. It's pretty fun. Players try to improve their realms, represented by customizable dice with faces that can be popped out and upgraded for better ones. Each game is different because you draw five tiles from a bag to determine the extra die faces available for that game. 
Now, even though this is one of my most anticipated games that's coming out in 2020, I'm one of my biggest concerns for this is going to be the price point for the game. I, I think you're going to be getting a lot of stuff in the game. But if they charge too much, I don't know if there's going to be enough people that are going to want to that are going to buy it. So that's my one concern, but we'll see what the retail price is going to be. Number 2. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective The Baker Street Irregulars. So if you're not familiar with Consulting Detective from Space Cowboys, it's a co-op mystery game where you're trying to sort of solve clues like Sherlock Holmes does. We actually have a couple of the other uh, versions, Sherlock Holmes Consulting. I think this might have been the first. Now, the, this is the first one, I believe, in the new reprint series. And they, we also have the Carlton House and Queens Park really enjoy the consulting detective and looking forward to more cases from the baker street irregulars number one tekenu from board and dice you might already be familiar with trismegistus and Ted to walk on actually here's trismegistus right here anyway I love both of those games trismegistus and Ted to walk on love the how the dice are used in that in those games I'm really looking forward to this new one from Board and Dice. The game board is divided into six sections, each associated with an Egyptian god. In the center stands an obelisk that casts its shadow onto different parts of the board. As a result, the area around the obelisk is divided into sunny, shaded, and dark sections, depending on how the obelisk casts its shadow at that particular moment. Each round, you'll draft dice and perform actions associated with the value of the die and the section from which the die was drafted. So that's my most anticipated list, but I have a few more that I wanted to add that just barely missed it. Actually, my first one I would put as number one, but I felt it was sort of cheating if I did that. It's the Hadle Project, the Time Stories, the new Time Story series, the uh, Blue Cycle, as they're calling it. Melissa and I actually designed this game, uh, this scenario, the Hadle Project, and just so you all know, it's Hadle. I know some people are calling it Hoddle or Hadal. Anyway, it's Hadel. It's coming. The word is coming from the Hadel Zone, uh, which is a uh, place down deep in the ocean's depths. So you can actually look that up online. I am 99% sure it's called Hadel. So you could check out that g the game coming soon. Hopefully, it's going to be hitting the U.S. retail stores February, March. Anyway, really soon. I think you can already pre-order it at some online stores, but you can check it out there or at your local game store. This new cycle, uh, it has some brand new mechanics. It has, oh, it's way more streamlined, way, way more streamlined than the original. So there's not like doing any of those like runs that you have to like redo everything over and over and over again. I personally love the new series. I know there's been people on both sides of this, but I love how they implemented this. One thing to say is we did create the series. We did design our scenario for the old series. So there were some things that were changed and developed by Space Cowboys for this new series. I really appreciate how they, what they did in this n new scenario basically and how they changed some things to make it work for the new, how this new series is gonna work. Uh, you are using these crystals to take actions instead of like, uh, and basically how you use time in the game. And there's no more rolling dice, there's cards, there's interaction cards. I love everything about it. I don't really want to spoil too much more. There's uh, there's just really cool things that are going on in the Hadle Project. It's going to take you three to four hours and to play the game. It is a standalone game. You don't need any other game box or anything. It all comes together, so I really appreciate that. So you can ask me any other questions you have about the Hadle Project down in the comments below. Another game that I didn't add to the list, Will and Sarah actually already have a preview copy of this, is Welcome to New Las Vegas from Deep Water Games uh, with a new theme, of course, new mechanisms, and you can check out their video on our channel soon for that one. Another game, games, that I'm not sure is going to be coming out this year is a Terraforming Mars game. Maybe I've heard of Legacy Games in the works. It's, I think, projected to come out in 2020, maybe. But if it's not, maybe 2021, we'll probably find out more information this year. This is designed by Rob Davio, who has designed other legacy games like Pandemic Legacy. But maybe if there's no Pan or, um, Terraforming Mars Legacy, maybe we'll see a Terraforming Mars dice game, which is also in the works as well. 
anything uh, Terraforming Mars. I'm really interested in it. I like uh, the theme. I like uh, Terraforming Mars as a game itself. So I'm interested in what other versions will come from it. Speaking of Board and Dice, that was my number one game. Te Tuakan is coming with an expansion, and I didn't really put any expansions on my list, so I added it here in the honorable mentions. The Shadow of Zittle, or Zittle, I'm not sure exactly how you say it, but I believe we'll see this hitting store shelves in March 2020. It has 10 new technologies and 10 new starting tiles to provide more varieties. Looking forward to that. Another Rio Grande game that I'm interested in, I just don't know that much about yet, is Nevada City. Uh, you and your family have come to Nevada City to set up a homestead and you're perform and trying to uh, outperform other homesteaders. Each player starts with a family uh, homestead mat where they have to establish their farms or livestock. It sounds like a really cool worker placement game, so really interested in, in that. I'm in. We'll find out more. Now there is a uh, crowdfunding, I would say, that I wanted to just mention, and that's the Rococo Deluxe, but it's not a Kickstarter game. It's actually being pre-ordered, I think, through another site, and uh, Rococo is a, a older game that Eagle Griffin is now sort of re- doing revamping and it's the Rococo Deluxe and man the artwork and amazing the artwork and the illustrations by Eno Tool are just out of this world amazing we deal with that Gloomhaven Dolls of the Line I didn't mention that in my top 10 I'm still going through Gloomhaven so I didn't feel it was fair for me to go and add Gloomhaven Dolls of the Lion on my top 10 anticipated since I'm actually still working through Gloomhaven itself but you can check that out coming, I believe, in 2020 from Cephalo Fair Games and Isaac Childress. Also, two games coming from Stonemaier Games that I had literally know nothing about. I wanted to add to my uh, most anticipated list as well. He had Jamie has codenamed them Sand, and another codename is Cape. I would love to hear your feedback and, and what you think these games, the themes are. Sand, I mean, could it be... A desert theme? A beach theme? Could Cape be a superhero theme? Could it be a like Cape Cod, like a water theme? Man, I don't, I don't know. I'm really interested in what these games will be. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we will be able to get those games and review them and show them off to you. I'm interested in what those games are. Uh, I believe there might be a Pandemic Legacy Season 3 coming this year. I mean, there was season one, season two. It's been, I think, over a year since season two came out, maybe two years now. What do you think about that? So, I'd love for you to tell me what some of your anticipated games are for this year. You're welcome to talk about Kickstarter games down there as well. I just limited myself, but I would love to hear any anticipated games that you are looking forward to buying or getting in 2020 that I didn't mention there's hundreds and hundreds, thousands of games I didn't even mention. And there's more that I don't even know about that are coming out. And I know Toy Fair is right around the corner. They're going to be releasing more and more titles out. And I would love to hear uh, what you are looking forward to. And love for you to come to TangibCon. That's February, uh, January 31st, February 1st, February 2nd. And as always, we'd love for you to subscribe to Tantrum House, our YouTube channel. And... Check out all our other videos coming out.